Hello and welcome to Tokenomics. I'm Anisha Gupta. The world of crypto and finance has been abuzz with the idea of tokenizing real-world assets on the blockchain, which simply means converting the ownership of real-world assets like stocks, bonds, real estate and commodities into a digital token. This has even grabbed the attention of the U.S. Federal Reserve, which recently released a working paper that explores the advantages and use cases of asset tokenization. Back home, the International Finance Services Center Authority has formed a committee to frame regulations for the tokenization of real and physical assets. To understand the impact of tokenization on world economy, we are now joined by Dilip Chinoy, who is chairman of Bharat Web3 Association. Mr. Chinoy, hi, thank you so much for joining us. And clearly the world is abuzz, buzzing for some time now. We have seen various banks talk about it as well. But even if you put aside many of these banks and institutions, there is this retail buzz as well. Even the crypto native place is talking more about tokenization of real world assets. Yeah, so if you look at uh, tokenization of real world assets, there are multiple things happening at different, different levels and across different industries. If I were to take uh, three uh, examples, right, and I'm going to take Indian examples. So there's a company in India that is actually tokenizing, uh, tokenizing ships, right? So a ship is a large, large investment. And uh, how do you actually break it up into smaller investments and then lease the ship to a shipping company so that the shipping company actually just pays the lease rental and the actual owners of it are fragmented across different geographies in the country and outside. And this is a real life example. And they earn a return on the, uh, on the asset as it, the usage goes up. Now, this is very interesting model for large capital intensive uh, tokenization uh, projects. The second example I like to take is from the real estate uh, sector. So there is a company in Bangalore has uh, you know, actually fractionalized and tokenized a, a real estate uh, uh, combination of multiple flats where uh, people, uh, many people are actually owning a part of one flat and they earn a revenue out of the rental uh, that the uh, flat uh, gets. And in the long term, they hope to uh, be able to you know, use the appreciation in the real asset value to gain uh, you know, returns. And the third is a very simple thing is happening in this thing and you know, uh, uh, a major artwork, uh, too expensive for me uh, to buy. Uh, you do tokenization and then allow people to own fractional parts of that artwork going ahead. I mean, I'm talking of non-financial uh, kind of uh, uh, tokenization here. Oh, well, absolutely. And there's just so much happening within the finance world as well. But, you know, the U.S. Fed paper also is exploring asset tokenization. According to you, as per your knowledge, how many countries or regulators, even banks, are looking at this when it comes to regulatory part? So if you look at uh, the... the Financial sector uh, tokenization of uh, different assets that you hold. I mean, the you know the, the uh, uh, there are about eight countries, if I look at it, who have active uh, programs in this uh, uh, in this space. And even in India, if you look at this coalition of banks that have got together to form that independent company to look at uh, uh, to look at the use of blockchain. Uh, within uh, the sector, even they are exploring the idea of how do you tokenize securities? Because once you do that, it's very simple, uh, you know, to track and to, you know, uh, to be able to fractionalize assets and get many more participants in the uh, whole ecosystem going uh, going ahead. Um, so eight countries uh, are definitely uh, looking at that. Two have done uh, pilots. Right, and uh, many more uh, pilots are on the way. Japan is far ahead uh, of. Uh, I think they've actually even allowed uh, people to issue startups to issue tokens to raise money. Mm. So, as you said, financial markets and banks, even countries, are looking at it. But when we look at normal daily, day-to-day -day life, common people, where have you seen tokenization touching them, and also traditional businesses, for that matter? 
So the real estate uh, tokenization is one example where it is actually touched, let's say, in Bangalore or in, 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 in uh, Kolkata, uh, in India, it has touched uh, the common uh, man. The other uh, aspect of where uh, it has uh, touched the uh, common man is, is, is slightly financial, but, you know, uh, if you go to, let's say, Flipverse and, or, or, and you look at it, uh, you actually can uh, tokenize, uh, you know, uh, the your your reward points and your other things that that you're looking at. It's a, it's still in a very pilot stage, but it, it you know any shopper uh, there could actually, depending on what they buy, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, they could uh, get uh, uh, tokens in the gaming industry. Some initial uh, uh, you know forays have happened. So if you're a gamer. And there are, you know, a few hundred million gamers in uh, in India. For them, it'll be a very new experience actually being able to look at that. And the recent, uh, you know, the GST uh, amendment and putting tokens and and uh, virtual digital assets as part of the overall thing uh, is going to give a fillip to that sector. Of course, art is very different than many you know, artists here. And if you were to take NFTs as tokens, and if you look at it, uh, maybe you know it, it's currently restricted to 450 creators on a particular uh, group called Fanstar, if I were to say, who are tokenizing their creations and ensuring that you know that people who view it or people who uh, actually enjoy that um, can uh, you know the whole payment the system is on the chain, and you know you get a reward. Uh, for the intellectual property that you have created. <laughs> all right. This is all very exciting and interesting. And I also want to get to numbers now. And the Boston Consulting Group has estimated that tokenizing real-world assets could become a 16 trillion industry by 2030. How would you look at that? Where do you think that the major push or absorption or adoption will come from? So, Manisha, you, you know, if you look at uh, the number and what they have talked about, right, uh, they have talked about how do you uh, look at uh, any real world asset okay so if i take if i take the real world uh, real estate right in india so if you were to even tokenize 10% of that you know uh, it 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 actually adds a huge uh, number to it and i don't i don't i think what the bcg has uh, done uh, you know is to look at what is the real current real estate uh, value? And they have looked at uh, what fraction could it be, uh, you know, fractionized uh, or, or uh, you know, tokenized, and uh, putting a kind of a thing of the adoption rate, right? So I, I believe that uh, it's a pretty realistic number. You can apply the same principles to the Indian real estate sector. And I think the REITs that have been approved by SEBI, the two REITs, uh, you know, different REITs that are there, with they have the 200 floor, uh, you know, floor this thing. Those also will find an opportunity to be to be uh, tokenized uh, going forward. So uh, it's a great opportunity. Real estate is only one. You take any real world asset. I gave you the examples of ships. It can be extended to uh, cars. It can be extended to um, Aeroplanes. It could be extended to any uh, real-world uh, asset uh, there uh, going forward. So I don't think that the number which uh, they have uh, talked about is difficult to achieve. But the fraction will vary in different different countries there. And this is very interesting. This, uh, you know, uh, possibly uh, doesn't really face if it's a non-financial kind of uh, segment it doesn't face any regulatory hurdles. You only need to get the uh, the process in place because with real estate, the challenge is, you know, is the title genuine, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what we are working with. Uh, VW is working with the Telangana government to create a whole uh, process around that. Mm. Well, of course, various state governments in their own uh, jurisdiction are working with a lot of things when it comes to blockchain and tokenization. But, uh, you know, the overall government doesn't really seem very comfortable. What is the attitude that you've seen from the regulators on to this one? Uh, where, where do you see a gap that needs to be filled by the government? I think there are three different levels that India is operating on. And I think the first thing is a global level where we are looking at how can we get uh, a global consensus 
on different aspects of the regulation, including, you know, the under the FATF uh, reporting entities, disclosure of, uh, you know, virtual digital assets uh, held, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to look at preventing arbitrage, you know, and people relocating in one different country versus another versus India, so uh, depending on regulatory arbitrage or tax arbitrage. So that's at the global level. And I think we will see some movement happening uh, possibly in the second week of October uh, when the uh, central bank governors and other meet in Marrakesh. The second uh, level is at the national level where we have uh, different regulations put in place, whether it is the one uh, relating to uh, the, again, the... Uh, uh, anti money laundering or you know terrorism which is the which is you know everyone has become a reporting entity under the fiu the second uh, kind of uh, regulation is uh, you know disclosure and taxation levels of uh, vdas uh, under uh, you know under the income tax act and that's a gray area so a real estate so a real estate uh, kind of uh, gen, you know uh, token um, you know whether it falls under a VDA or whether it falls out that that has to be clarified and more or less it will be outside uh, that. And then third at the state level, where you know state governments, uh, I gave the example of West Bengal, Telangana, you know the, in Karnataka, uh, something also happening in Maharashtra, where people have tokenized uh, assets and going ahead and then you know the regulatory uh, regul there's no actual regulatory challenge, but it making carving out. A kind of space; it does not fall into the crypto or the cryptocurrency uh, part of it. So, at three different levels, we see regulation happening. But we believe that the taxation aspect on this has to be uh, cleared. Um, and um, I think you know uh, the distinction made between investing in a you know in a non real a real a real asset backed token versus a real asset back token has to be made, NFTs have to be segregated here. And globally, I think even BW is working with the Singapore Association, the MICA or the, the EU Association and you know the North American Association to get a global taxonomy uh, across tokens so it becomes very easy for regulation and we hope to take it to the government uh, soon. Oh, well, absolutely. While all of this looks doable and very exciting, but as you said, there are various levels that the work is being done on. It's corporates, it's banks, it's financials, it's uh, state uh, governments, governments, and on the global level as well. But uh, yes, uh, there is a work being done and there is a lot of positivity coming in here. Mr. Shinoy, thank you as always for joining us at CNBC TV 18. On that note, it's time for a short break, but don't go anywhere because this discussion continues with Ashish Anand of Roof Finance and Pranav Maheshwari of Edge and Node when we return.